Bonjour. Thank you, everyone. We'll now start the England Eve of Match Briefing with scrum coach Tom Harrison and players Joe Marchant and Dan Cole. We'll straight away start with questions from the floor. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Hi, everyone. Uh, Tom, just a quick word on Jack Willis, if that's all right. Obviously, you know, he had to go home. Um, gutting for him. And I just wonder, just a word on, on him, and I wonder if there's any update on, on a potential replacement as yet. Yeah, so look, I think uh, gutting for him and gutting for all of us. Um, he, was, he was great when he was here in the squad, um, and we'll give him the best support we can with his recovery. Um, in terms of next steps, there's many meetings going on as staff um, as we make decisions, so there's no update as, as current. You've got a bit of time, haven't you? Because, and obviously, what's more pressing is this match. Yeah, so as always, we're focused on this match and what comes this weekend. And uh, what, what do you expect from Samoa this weekend? I think we talk, touched on before about their sort of the improvements they've made, and clearly it's a really strong lineup they've they've selected. What are you expecting to see from them? Um, look, I'm expecting a team that's going to try and challenge us physically, and then be very direct, um, and there should be some big collisions. And Joe, a big congratulations on making the, the lineup. Um, it's a big opportunity, isn't it? I mean, and obviously coming in on the wing, I know you're comfortable. In, in a number of positions, but how do you see this opportunity and also your specific role in this match? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, obviously, to be on the team sheet is uh, is I'm just really happy about. Um, but yeah, the Samoans they're going to come strong this weekend. They're going to be physical, so we've done a lot of good prep over the last couple of weeks. So yeah, we should be ready. Johnny was talking yesterday about one of the maybe toughest mental aspects of playing on, on the wing is, especially in a Test match, you might have an extended period of time where you know you might not be directly involved but then all of a sudden something massive will happen where you have that key involvement and it's just about kind of being f focused all the times even if there are individual lulls yeah I think for, for being on the wing it's about always staying alive because you never know when it's going to come and you know your role could be completely different it could be just holding a bit of width or it could be following around and just waiting um, for like a, an inside ball or an outside shoulder so for us um, yeah we just got to keep working hard and, and make sure all the boys are working hard inside us and Hopefully we get a good result. And Dan, um, I was looking earlier on, thinking about Manu, and obviously you're, you know, you know the Tuolangi family pretty well from from your experiences there. I was kind of looking back at the 2010 Premiership final. Obviously, Alessandro played, and you came off the bench, didn't you? I mean, you've known Manu and his and you know his brothers for a long time. How, how <laughs> for someone who does know them so well, how best would you sum up their influence in in Leicester and Samoa, and now obviously England too? Oh, it's been um, massive, I think. A, the um, way in which, as I think, six brothers have, um, you know, um, before, well, um, played for Leicester and performed. And um, I think culturally they set the tone in the way they play the game. Um, I think, you know, you wouldn't have found around that period of time, Alessandro was the best winger in the world. Um, Manu was coming on the scene. And previously had Henry Freddy. Um, you know, he, we know their impact. Um, so, yeah, they've been massive, I think. Um, that played a big part in the success of how Leicester played, and uh, you know, Manu's been a massive part of England since 2010 or 11 when he got capped. Um, you know, the way he plays, the way he plays in the front foot, the physicality he brings, um, also the, the deafness of the touches he has around the field, um, and in defence, he's obviously a big presence as well. So yeah, he's been a he's a great player for us. Um, I know he's very excited for this weekend. I think it's the first time he's ever played against um, Samoa, so I think you know he'll. Um, I think him and his family are really looking forward to the occasion. And just beyond this match, I mean, how he must be so pleased to be back fit after, you know, he obviously had the well documented issues at different points, but just to be sort of back fit, back to his best and able to deliver what he can. 
No, oh, yeah, I think you know he's um, yes, as you say, he's overcome a lot uh, injury wise, and I think you know credit to him, he's kept going and he's playing now, and you know he's playing some of his best rugby he's played. Um, and I think he, it's credit to him um, and the people around him that have been able to get you know him back to this World Cup, and I think he's loving every minute. I think it makes him appreciate more probably how. Um, you know, when you first come on the scene, you take it for granted. Where I think a lot of him and a lot of the older guys have appreciate much more um, this stage of our careers and what we're doing, and just enjoying every. You know, I know Manu um, enjoys every day and what he brings to the team on and off the field. It's uh, you know, he's a great guy to have in the squad and be around, and he makes great coffee too, which is a bonus. Uh, Dan, another Turlaki question uh, away from Manu. How would, could you maybe sum up uh, Henry? Freddie uh, and Alassana for maybe a generation of players who hadn't seen and what their point of difference was aside from raw power or was that? Well, go on YouTube, just type them in their names and go watch the five minute clips of them running over people. Um, you'll find out what they're about. Um, no, but I say they, were, they are they obviously brought that immense um, physical presence. I remember training with Henry, Alassana, Freddie was a bit before me, but obviously he had a um, you know, he was head of the sort of family in that regard. Are those boys coming over here and, and making sure everyone fit in and, and added to the team? And yeah, no, they're. Um, we've seen some highlights this week of um, Henry and uh, Alessandra. And yeah, he, I mean, not only physicality, but they say that uh, Alessandra, remember there was one season he was unstoppable. He would run over people that you have the ability to catch, pass, offload, and as a decoy runner. And, um, you know, Manu is a similar vein, but they're, you know, they're fantastic players and they're a massive part of why Leicester was successful. Is there one to a laggy hit that sort of sticks in your mind? Um, there are plenty I enjoy because none of them been on me. So um, <laughs> yeah, no, there was. Um, yeah, just just go on YouTube and and just enjoy three hours worth of content of those guys hitting people, and it's your afternoon done. Can I ask Dan about how man has maybe matured over the years? You guys all call him the chief, and he's. He came onto the scene as probably quite a raw player, but now seems to be almost like a father figure to some of the younger guys and likes his chess and, as you say, makes the coffee. Like You've, you've watched him mature over that period. Can you just sort of explain how that process has gone for him? Well, yeah, no, so he, he, when he first played, um, you know, he was outstanding talent. You obviously knew that straight away from when he first came into the first team. Um, and he burst onto the scene and he was... Um, yeah, unstoppable. I think like as time has gone on, he's got older. I know he's um, married, children. You know, it matures a man, and I think he's definitely um, embraced that role, and especially being more senior. And you've gone from someone who, um, a young guy, that's obviously incredibly talented, to say that more mm. senior role in the team. Um, and is he's got a wealth of experience from playing all over the shop and in massive games. And you know, as I say he adds to the team, and he brings a lot off the field as well, which is great for. Um, uh, not for the young guys, but also everyone around, because hey, he's very level-headed, um, and you know, he enjoys. I think he brings an appreciation of, of playing in the day-to-day. -day of because obviously, had it, he's had periods of his life where he's not been able to do it day-to-day, -day, so he's, he brings that enjoyment um, to the environment, which I think we all feed off. Uh, and when he's, to use the phrase, sort of on one um, in a game, what's that like for the rest of you? Is he laughing as he's going through contacts and hitting Yeah, just give him the ball, like let him do his thing. Yeah. Easy. Game plan sorted. Um, <laughs> you know, he, 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 like I say, he, it's having someone like the physicality of Manu and also what he can do, um, not just physically wise, but the way he runs, the way he hits, um, his ability to attract defence and stuff, it creates, I think, you know, Manu's at his best. Everyone can see that, everyone can appreciate that. And as a team, it's brilliant because... Um, you know, you want to play with that because it's like the way it rises, increases the level of the team, the excitement, what we do. So, yes, he's, he's a great player to have. Joe, Courtney Laws was speaking earlier in the week about how important the kicking game is to England and how good you are at getting the ball back. As I guess you and Johnny will have big roles to play within that. Can you say what the ingredients are of a good, a strong kick chase game? I think. Um, <coughs> The main thing is just wanting to get the ball back. Um, see, we've got some great kickers here who can put it on the money. So for us, going after it and getting it back is a uh, is a huge strength, and you just got to commit to it. Um, and you can see the you can see the impact it has on the rest of the boys when you do get the ball back and they're able to play the ball away and make things happen off the back of it. So yeah, for us, it's a really big responsibility. So yeah, we're looking forward to it. And where does the balance lie between sort of determination to get the ball back and, and technique? I think, well, it's a, bit, it's a bit of both, really, isn't it? You've got to have technique to, to be able to do it, and you've got to have the determination to win it back, which is, you know, which is what's going to actually win it at the end of the day. So, 
yeah, we don't, we never want to do anything reckless, but yeah, we always just want to go get the ball back and, and do the best for the team. We're at the back, and then we're here, and then we're here. Uh, Tom, Dan, do you mind if I ask you a nosy question about the scrum? Uh, what, are, what are the nuts and bolts that you've been thinking of during this tournament that you've seen improvements in, and, and what are the bits you've absolutely got to get right tomorrow against Samoa? Tom, smash and please. please. Yeah. Um, so I think what we've been working on is how we can, I've said about this before, get to the contest. So we'll break the scrum up in different, different parts and we want to make sure that the ball comes into the scrum and we can have a fair pushing contest. So we're not over leaning, we're being balanced within our setup. Um, we're being able to engage um, strongly uh, and then get to the contest. Uh, that's what we've been focusing on. Um, we've had some real good success with that in, in past games. So in terms of feedback from referees is we're we're painting good pictures and positive pictures, so it's to continue to do that. In terms of uh, tomorrow, um, look, we've got to make sure we get our our stuff right. They've got experience front row in Al Toa and the two Lay brothers. Um, we've been playing for since 2007 plus, I think. So they've got experience group there. So we're going to have a challenge there. But the huge thing we focus on is how can we make sure that we are in each one of our steps and our processes. We're as consistent as we can be to make sure we can get to the contest and then have a fair pushing contest. I one for Joe. Um, with Owen coming into the side alongside George Ford, um, we describe it as you and Manu just moving one place out as if it's as simple as that. But c can you tell us what is added to England's attacking game, how England's attacking game will change by having George Ford and Owen Farrell on the same side? I think just having two uh, ball players at 10 and 12 always... Um, it just makes it a bit more fluid. So for us, I mean, me and Manu, um, hopefully, and Johnny get a bit more ball, which would be great. Um, but yeah, it's just they're, they're both amazing tens in their own right. So to have them together is uh, is obviously huge for the team. How does your role change um, by moving that one place out? Is it completely different for you? Do you have to have a different mindset? Yeah, to be honest, it doesn't change too much. Um, when I'm playing at 13 and when I'm playing on the wing, I still end up in pretty similar positions. So. For me, it's just about well, one about being on the pitch and just doing the best for the team. So, um, yeah, there's not too much different. Same with Manu; he he's got his role. He's obviously a big, physical, strong carrier. So, when he gets the ball in his hands and he goes forward, it's good for for everyone around him. So, yeah, nothing really changed too much. Okay. Joe, it, it's it's a similar question, really. Do, do, are you asked to do a different role for England on the wing to the one that you were doing for Quinns back at the Stoop? Um, same again, really. Not too much. Obviously, we're lucky at Quinns. We've got Marcus, um, who is who's a great 10 in his own right. Um, and he's got an unbelievable kicking game. He can run. He can do it all. So um, it's the same kind of thing. Uh, wherever I'm playing 13 or on the wing, it's, uh, it's a very similar role. Um, you've seen a few times just end up on the edge quite a bit um, for Quinns, even if I've got 13 on my back. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be doing the same thing. Okay, we're going there and then we're here. Uh, what for Joe? Joe, how different are you from the player who just missed out in 2019 and what did that do to you in terms of uh, this tournament? Um, I, f I feel like I've grown as a, as a person, as a player. Um, obviously, I've played in three of the four warm-up games and um, I was absolutely gutted not to be, not to be picked. But, yeah, it's a, a four-year cycle is a load of time to, to you know, get on top of the things that you want to progress in. And, and for me, I feel like I'm... Um, physically in a really good place, uh, mentally in a good place, and, and just really enjoying my rugby, which is, which is a huge thing for me. I play, I play my best with a smile on my face, so, um, yeah, I'm loving it. Did you have this tournament kind of ring-fenced in your diary? Yeah, obviously, just the World Cup. Every, every World Cup is always ring-fenced for anyone who's a keen rugby fan um, and, well, and a player, really. So, yeah, obviously, I've wanted to play in the World Cup. I've always wanted to play in the World Cup since I was a kid, so... I was absolutely buzzing when Steve um, Steve picked me, so hopefully uh, continues to play. Thanks. Uh, one for you, Dan, if I can. Uh, it's a month since Argentina, the first game. Did you know you'd have such a a break between matches? And for, for you, is that good, or do you would you would you thrive on regularity of game? How does how do you prepare differently when you've got such a break? Um, I do as I'm told. That's what I do. Um, yeah, no, I, well, I, I say we are prepared. Um, whether you play or not, you're prepared to step in at any moment, and that's what, you know, credit Steve and Allard and this guy um, <laughs> to make sure that we're ready to go. And that's, you know, um, you find out on the Monday, the Tuesday, whenever it is that you picked or you're not, and then 
you play your role in the team. For me, like I've played consecutive games, I've not played games. Like it's we're prepared in such a way. I think with the pre-season we've had that, and the time together we've had in the team and in and out with the warm-up games, that you're just ready to go. So yeah, it doesn't really bother me too much. So, but you you weren't told by Steve at the start you play this one and then we'll see you in a few weeks' time. You were it, it is no no no. It's, it's been every team's been picked week to week. Um, and as I say, you, you know, you know your role in the team, whether it's starting bench or um, to support the team as the third choice. Is you have a role to play during the week, whether it's providing um, to run as the opposition to the moves they do to try and prep the team best as well. And you just do that role because it's me here to help the team. Just one quickly for, for Joe. Um, the team came into the core tournament with doubts. I think it's fair to say. Do you? Is there a sense between you now that if the other team? We're looking at you and almost dismissing you as a as a as a contender. That, that that's changed. That you've sneaked up, maybe on the behind, under the radar. But people are looking, thinking, "Hang on, England, fewest points conceded, one or three matches, improving game to game." Maybe you're starting to sow seeds of doubt in their in their minds as well. Um, to be honest, we didn't really think too much about um, everyone else. The the whole focus of this campaign from the start of the warm up games was about us about us um, like becoming a good team, becoming a great team and a team that could win the World Cup. So yeah, there's never been any um, there's never been any real thoughts of what other people are thinking about it. It's just what we can do on the pitch. And for us it's one game at a time. We've see, we've started with three great games in this warm up in this World Cup, sorry. Um, and yeah, we're just looking forward to the fourth. A question for Dan if that's okay about Owen Farrell who it looks tomorrow to be a sort of passing of the baton between Johnny Wilkinson and Owen Farrell as he looks to surpass the, the, the points total. I mean, what it's not something that Owen's wanted to speak too much on. We know he's very modest, but I just wonder what do you make of that kind of changing of the guard and, and what Owen's achieved? Well, I think, you know, it's two, they're both two phenomenal players. Um, yeah, I'm sure, you know, anyone that's in the uh, same ranking as Johnny Wilkinson, um, you have to be a great player and I say for Owen to... Um, potentially surpasses um, point scoring record is shows you. I mean, Owen's played a lot, so it shows you how good Johnny Wilkinson was, and it shows at the same time how good um, Owen is and how consistent he is with his goal kicking and his application. And to be as good as he is for as long as he has been, it's um, you know it takes some dedication on off the field. And um, yeah, no, he's a leader. Uh, he's captain for a reason. Um, I think he's shown his quality throughout the the hundred and however many Test matches he's played. And um, you yeah, know, hopefully. Tomorrow or some point in this tournament, he'll get the chance to break that record. I mean, it would help if the wingers didn't score in the corner all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking that. So, go under the sticks, right? Got it. Help him. <laughs> and just one uh, for Tom. You mentioned the physicality of Samoa. You mentioned big collisions. I just wonder, how do you manage that? We know that the focus is your game tomorrow, but how do you manage that physicality, those collisions, when you know you're looking ahead to a quarterfinal in, in a week's time? So first, I think we're looking ahead to this weekend. Um, in terms of managing that, I think uh, players um, have to front up. Physically, you can't step back. You've got to step forward, uh, and you've got to be smart in how you play. So you obviously, you don't want to be running straight into them. Um, so just how we target different parts of the game, how we potentially move the ball. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That brings to an end the eve of match briefing for England. Thank you. Everybody on the top table, good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Just a reminder for everybody, the venue media centre closes at 3.30 today. Thank you. 3.30.